everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with Deck, who is world ranked 22 and we're both England Academy players. We're going to do a Q&A. Q&A, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, we've been uh, getting some questions in today, haven't we? So, have a little conversation about the last few months, everything that's been going on, like strange times. I haven't been to a squad in ages, so it's so nice to see everyone and get on court with other people. Yeah, 100%. What, when, when lockdown started and all of that, what was it like for you? How much training were you doing and did you like have time off and stuff? at any point. I got back from Cairo straight away and it literally just went into lockdown so I just took a couple of weeks off because I was travelling. I had nationals and I went to Cincinnati, then Chicago, then Cairo. Yeah, literally traveling. back to back so I yeah. just thought I need to have a break. So I took two weeks off, did a few runs in that and then sort of got back to doing one or two sessions a day. I tried to keep a normal routine that I'd do anyway, just training. Um, yeah, I mean I had like four or five days off after Canary Wharf when everything was starting to sort of unravel. Um, but for me, I like to just kind of keep training quite a lot. Mentally as well, even if I'm not playing squash, like I'm the type of person that would want to be in the gym or just doing something f for the sake of staying active. Yeah. So I maybe had like four or five days off and then, I mean, it was just literally had to get so creative and improvise, right? Yeah, I had to order so much stuff to literally turn my living room into a gym. So our trainer was, basically gave us like a shopping list <laughs> yeah. of stuff to order, really like oh, sandbags so and much, yeah. bands and ropes and all of this kind of <laughs> stuff so it was like I feel like we were really lucky with the weather as well like I was doing so many runs outside what were like the strange weird sessions that you started that you were improvising with seeing what other people were posting so like when Nick posted about the Spartan challenge I did that a couple of times yeah. me and Charlie because we were doing lockdown together me and him FaceTime packed quite a lot and we actually did Zoom workouts together yeah, yeah. and made it quite competitive and it actually was really good. When is our next tournament? It's from Double Dot Squash Academy. Mm. So Egypt, you're going to Egypt? Yeah. Egypt next week, platinum event uh, in Cairo. Um, yeah. So at the pyramids, actually. Not, we're not sure how it's going to be over there because obviously yeah. here in Manchester, a couple of weeks ago it was really strict and we weren't allowed out of the hotel. So I'm not sure what it's going to be like over there. We have to be there at noon on the 8th to have a COVID test anyway. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Right, I found the question. Um, oh, this is a good one actually from Ollie Gog. What's your first memory of playing squash? I used to have a favourite racket and my dad put pink string in it and stenciled a J in the middle and I loved it so much and at my primary school we used to have squash sessions which my dad took and I remember messing around with my friends, literally sprinted up to the front wall, hit like a drop to hit it back to my friend I literally smashed my racket so hard into the front wall, <laughs> it cracked and no I was way. in absolute tears, I was honestly crying no so way. much. Wait, so how old were you then at this point? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to say, probably like eight or nine. <laughs> yeah. I think for me it was, um, so my uncle taught me, or took me like to the local leisure centre when I was six. And for me it's like a vivid memory of having, do you remember like the yellow and purple Dunlop racket, the mini one, did you yeah. ever see those? So that it was like a mini junior racket that Dunlop used to make, bright yellow and purple. Um, I don't think they make any more, this is literally, 20 years ago um, and yeah just the memory of my, my uncle giving me this little racket and I'm just standing at the back of this squash court like sort of in awe thinking what, what am I supposed to do here <laughs> um, and then yeah it's crazy because I don't really have many memories after that in like the early years from like 6 to 10 yeah. but obviously that's where it all started so kind of look back on junior days in like late teens when you'd go and play European events yeah. it's kind of some of the best memories though yeah they were so much fun I always loved doing European individuals with England where did you so where did you play your under 19s Euros did you play a couple I played my first one when I was 17 and that was in Portugal and then I didn't actually get to play my last one because I was injured what about you first one was in Switzerland a game when I was 17 and then second one was in Portugal yeah when I was 18 and yeah, that was always like an amazing 10 days as a junior. Kind of some of the best memories, because I think I feel like when you're a junior as well, 
it's not as important as it like squashes it might be the main thing that you do aside from education but it's not like your job no it's not your life completely so you kind of just there enjoying time with your friends and being yeah. in different countries because to be able to do that like 17 is pretty pretty special i guess so it's nice to be it was nice just doing that when there was kind of no pressure on it was just you're enjoying yeah so much fun you know and like we're still like friends with all the people that we probably experienced those memories with as well like there's yeah. so many pe people here that i went to portugal with i went to worlds with and we literally share all those memories together we got from stats reflections and it's who is your favorite opponent to play and why toughest opponent for me toughest slash favorite all in one is probably gawad um he's like the most skilled player in our generation on the men's side um, never beaten him but we've had some close games and we've played quite a lot especially in the last couple of seasons so but yeah always really enjoyed playing him um, it's such very... a good backhand drop <laughs> <laughs> good backhand everything to be honest his practice court was before mine in manchester and i was literally in awe watching him what about you i mean it would have been an absolute dream to play against raneem yeah. well, before she retired like that would have been a dream come true i literally look up to her so much so I was gutted when I heard she retired yeah but this is gonna be a really vague answer but I think anyone in the top 10 is gonna be an amazing experience to play against so obviously I just played tired two weeks ago and it was just incredible to see the, how she is before a match and professionalism rubs off on you and it's just really awesome what's the number one thing that stands out when you play someone in the top 10 versus players that are lower ranked I feel like there were times when I've played some of them where I've matched them to like four or five all and then they literally just go up another gear and it's so hard to match them at that level. Yeah. I've played Alison in so many practice matches and we're neck and neck to like four all and then she literally just goes up another gear and I just struggle to compete with her at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really tough. No, I feel you. I feel you. That's, <laughs> that's what it felt like when I started playing top ten guys as well. It's like you can do it for the first half an hour and then it's uh, the intensity becomes yeah. like too much right so right another question hashbind i've probably butchered that <laughs> but hashbind <laughs> underscore is saying did you feel the lockdown helped in a way i think it helped and it didn't at the same time i mean we went so long not being able to play squash it made me realize how much i do love the game and how much i do want to compete and do what i do it just made me hungrier was there like one area that you found that you were able to improve particularly with having not having to be on court? It did help my mentality with the fact that you had to, like during lockdown, we had to do training sessions. We had to do it, otherwise we're just going to lose our fitness. Yeah, I agree with all of the above. Um, I think it helped me as well on a personal level, I think probably mentally as much as anything else, just to realise that with all the stuff going on in the world, especially this year, that there's more to life than squash that's for sure like yeah. it's quite easy i think when you're on tour nine ten months a year and you're always around squash because it's your job and your lifestyle it's easy to think that it's like the be all and end all and it's like everything depends on you know the result of a match and all that losing really it's isn't the end of the in world the grand scheme, it doesn't really <laughs> matter does it i mean we're kind of incredibly fortunate i feel to get to yeah. travel the world for a living and Literally. not have to sit on a, on a desk job like nine to five which I, is yeah, hard I couldn't do it. which is hard work i've got like total respect for people that like go in an office every day because i couldn't do that no my head would fall off yeah i think that is all of the decent questions um <laughs> from mine I, I got all of about five to my uh re responses to me which is fairly typical <laughs> <laughs> so i have no supporters <laughs> How strict are you with your diets and who would you say is the strictest on tour with their diet from Kev underscore Chung? Again on the male side probably Jimbo sticks out because he's um, vegetarian yeah. I think he's a vegan as well don't quote me um, so yeah I know Jimbo for many years has been very um, meticulous about his diet and uh, not eating meat and dairy and that kind of stuff and I guess obviously if you are that way inclined then you have to pay more attention to detail to you have to plan ahead because you might not be able to get what you want yeah. when you're traveling and all that kind of stuff so, um i i'm just like quite balanced with my diet like i lots of fruit and veg and healthy stuff and i cook most of my meals but equally 
you know, if I want to have uh, treat some, yourself yeah, some cake. <laughs> uh, I'm quite, and I think it depends on your body type as well. I reckon. Yeah. I'm, I'm like unbelievably fortunate in my metabolism and same here. That kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so lucky. Um, I suppose that does like totally depend on your yeah. uh, biology and yeah, how you're made up. Everything is fine in moderation. Like you just got to be uh, sensible balance, of what balance, you have. Right? It's just balance. Yeah. yeah. Hannah Craig asks, how was the transition from? Ah, that was it. Oh, juniors into seniors. From juniors to seniors. Um, I think tough. Yeah, it to, is hard. To be Definitely is hard. It's a, it's a completely different game. I think when yeah. you're a junior, if you get to a decent level, like we were both top three, top five juniors in the country in yeah. Europe, um, it's quite easy to believe your own hype at that point and think, right, I, I was like the best junior in Europe. I'm going to be. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be one of the best in the world now, like in a few years. And then you go on tour and you start playing guys that are 10 years older and physically stronger and they're like bullying you on court and you kind of think, and yeah, hold on, this isn't what was happening in juniors, do you know what I mean? So you, you have to get street wise, you have to get physically a lot stronger. And, and then also they talk about like making junior mistakes, don't they? Like yeah. if you're playing like a junior, it's because you're wrong shot selections and hitting a lot of errors and stuff. I think you have to quickly learn to, to be more mature and make good decisions and not just put the ball into the tin every other no, way. No, definitely, I agree on that. I feel as well like I was so fortunate with the help of England squash. They gave me wild cards for the British and stuff in the qualifying. So I was very lucky to be able to play some of the top girls making that move from juniors to seniors and I think that did really help getting those little experiences just to show you what it's going to be like when you have to go and play all these events. Did you find it intimidating going off traveling kind of on your own when you're 18, 19? Because I guess to like put it in perspective you're essentially just turning 18 it's your first job, if you can call it that, it's not a traditional job as we know but you're basically starting off your first job and you're just going to the other side of the world on your own you're going to be seeing people that you've never met um, and then you've got the pressure of competing as well so it's not really a normal thing to do and no. I, I don't think maybe people think about that side of things at all you know no, especially if you're someone not. like very close to your family and friends you like being around people you like being in company and stuff it's quite alien to then say okay I'm going to jump on a plane to Canada or Australia and yeah um, having not really travelled much before as well. I think it can be super intimidating, um, you yeah. know, so it's nice to be taken for granted that, I don't think. Thanks so much for coming on and having enjoyed a chat. That. It yeah, was really good. Good. To, good to catch up. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and let me know if you want to see anything else like this. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>